Hey everyone, this is Mike. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make your dungeon runs a lot smoother. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because the last few days I've had some really horrible parties doing expert roulette and then yesterday I had quite the opposite. I had one of the best dungeon runs in forever. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about it because dungeons is something that in Final Fantasy you do quite regularly, especially if you're somebody that is currently not farming savage or something like that. Um, Expert Roulette is still the best resource to quickly get tombstones if you want to get that weekly cap done and it's basically going to be the same dungeons over and over again and since they also said in the last life letter that they're only going to be doing one new dungeon at a time it seems that Expert Roulette is not going to have the same variety as it had back in Heavensward or Stormblood so that's why I kind of want to talk about this to kind of make it a better experience for not only yourself but also for your party members because it is somebody, something that all four of you will be experiencing, of course, and it will also take all four people to actually try their best to make it a good experience for everyone. So, quick disclaimer, this video was taken straight from my stream, so that's why the video quality is going to be a bit less than usual, because it's uploaded like to Twitch, of course, instead of the like just normal recording, and that's why there's also no background sound, because otherwise you'd hear me and some of my friends that were on Discord talking through it, and some copyrighted music, so that's why I got rid of all of the audio and just slapped on the background theme from the dungeon itself. But, let's talk about what we're actually going to be talking about, and that is the dungeon runs. So, in general, there are three main points that make a dungeon run smooth, in my opinion. A tank using proper cooldowns, DPS doing good damage and knowing how to do AoEs, and a healer DPSing as well. And I want to take this healer DPS kind of as a third point instead of just saying as a second point like doing damage because for healers doing damage is not something that is as straightforward as the other like two rules I guess you could say for a tank previously you had your tank stance and you had to know like when you could go out of that tank stance or something like that but going into Shadowbringers they kind of got rid of that altogether and tanks are basically melee DPS with defensive cooldowns now and for DPS well their whole role is just about doing damage now for healers, doing damage in dungeons, both in dungeons and raids as well, it takes experience to kind of get used to how much damage can you do before you need to start healing. And that's why I think healing is a relatively simple role when you just look at the basics of it as like keeping the party alive, because that's really easy about the job. But what is hard about the job is, or the role, is learning how much DPS can you do before people start dying. And you need to find kind of the balance of how am I going to be able to do as much DPS as possible, but how can I also keep the party alive? And you'll see throughout this dungeon, because all three of us, or all four of us, are doing all three of these things, I am doing a lot of DPS as a healer, my tank is using proper cooldowns, and both of my DPS are using their proper AoE rotations when it comes to trash packs, and they're also doing a good single target rotation when it comes to the boss fights, and also very importantly, not taking unnecessary damage. And because of all those things, I need to do very little healing, so little healing, that I only cast one heal that isn't free in this entire dungeon, if we're not taking uh, regen as into account. But basically all of the GCD heals that weren't free were cast during downtime. So because of that, I'm technically not even losing damage. So all of the, when I talk about free healing, I talk about off global cooldowns and I talk about, for example, with White Mage, the lilies, because lilies are something that translates into DPS with your blood lily. So that's why I say that I only really used free healing in this whole dungeon outside of some regions, but those were usually given at the start of a boss fight when we weren't even fighting or whilst the tank was pulling together all of the mobs in a trash pack. So because of this, because my tank was using proper cooldowns, it means that the tank is going to be taking so much less damage than they otherwise would. And they, he also used his invuls, and that is something that I see a lot of tanks not do in dungeons. Sometimes, like for example with a paladin, paladin is the best example of an invul that is the easiest to use together with your healer, because you don't really need anything for it, you just press it, you take no damage. But when it comes to something like Superbolite or Living Dead, and home gang, I'm not a huge fan of in dungeons, but the other two I am. Um, you kind of require a little bit more communication between you as the tank and your healer because they are cooldowns that work a little bit weird. So, for example, leaving that, I don't like using it if there is no white mage in the party, but when it comes to something like Superbolite, you can use it with whatever healer there is because it is so easy to heal. But on the other hand, 
your healer does need to kind of know that you're going to be using it because otherwise it might feel like oh my tank is not pressing cooldowns I need to spam heal this guy to full because otherwise he's gonna die whereas the tank is just waiting to drop low before he uses that superb light to not lose any effective HP so to speak so it is kind of nice that if you want to use your invuln as a tank, let the healer know, for example, I'm going to superb light the next pack of mobs, or say you're a dark knight and there is a white mage in the party, ask if they have benediction ready or something like that. And if they do, say that you're going to use living dead so that they know that they can let you die, figuratively speaking, uh, so that that living dead can proc and then they can heal the walking dead afterwards with their benediction. So. Kind of talking in between that, letting your healer know when you're going to be using your invulns, that kind of stuff can be a very good thing when you're tanking a dungeon. And also, even if you're not going to be using your invuln, proper cooldown usage is very important. You have so many different cooldowns available to you right now uh, to make dungeon packs easier, not only just the trash mob packs, but also the boss itself. Because boss, bosses take a lot longer now in the dungeons nowadays than they did back in Stormblood and Heavensward. Um, so being able to use some of your cooldowns there will allow it to be up again for the next trash pack most of the time as well. So proper cooldown usage, that is one of the things. Um, I'll also quickly say Reprisal got changed. So Reprisal is now AoE and it's only on one minute so you can basically use it for each trash pack that is in the dungeon. And Arm's Length is also a tank cooldown when it comes to trash packs because it slows the mobs that hit you. Bosses are resistant to this but pretty much any mob in a dungeon that is not a mini boss will be affected by this slow and it's basically I think like a 15 second rampart almost. So definitely be using your arm length and your reprisal as well because they are pretty good tanking cooldowns. And then other than that of course you've got your rampart, you've got your 30% and then you have usually your special GCD as well or your special cooldown. For example Paladin doesn't have one so that's a bit unfortunate but then for example Dark Knight. Dark Mind is also kind of shit in dungeons when it comes to trash packs because most mobs do physical damage and not magical damage. So that's kind of like the tanking aspect of it, have a proper cooldown rotation, know kind of what cooldowns you want to use where when it comes to doing those trash packs, because if you are cooldowning correctly, your healer is going to have to heal a lot less, and a healer healing less means that they can DPS more. And that brings me to the next point. Doing proper AoE rotations is pretty important as well, because if your tank is taking less damage when those cooldowns are up, it means they're going to be taking a lot more damage once those cooldowns run out. And once you get to that point where your tank is without cooldowns or they need to save certain cooldowns for the next trash pack, it means that your healer will have to start healing a lot more because when the cooldowns are up, the tank doesn't take much damage. So it is pretty carefree as a healer and you can just spam away at that holy or whatever else you might be using as your AoE and once those cooldowns run out you need to pay a lot more attention to the tank to make sure that they don't die because they're going to drop low a lot faster so that is where it's really important that your dps are going to be using the proper aoe rotations as well so that the mobs will die a lot faster now something that i also see some people do is that they don't use their dps buffs for example no mercy brotherhood technical step, ley lines whatever you may call it whether it be a personal dps buff like no mercy or ley lines or it be a AoE raid buff, like for example Brotherhood, Embolden, Divination, whatever it might be. Use those things on trash packs, because technically you're going to be doing the most damage on those trash packs, as AoEing in this game is incredibly strong now. So use your raid buffs, use your personal buffs, because usually by the time that you get to the mini boss, those buffs are going to be up anyway, so you might as well just use them to make those trash packs easier, because trash packs are actually the hardest part of a dungeon as a whole. Like the mini bosses usually don't deal too much damage or they don't require too big of a DPS check. Well, they don't actually have a DPS check because I don't think there's any dungeon boss in the game, uh, in Shadowbringers at least, that has a real hard and rage. So just use your cooldowns on those trash packs to make them easier because that is where you're going to be spending the most time in a dungeon. And then of course, if your DPS are making it so that the mobs die fast enough, the tank isn't taking much damage means that the healer can pretty much full-time DPS and only use their off-global cooldown healing to make sure that the tank stays alive. And then of course that makes it so that the healer does a lot of DPS, which then again contributes to the mobs dying faster. And then you pretty much move on like that. So that's pretty important as well. Now, when it comes to AoEing, a lot of people still like to single target when there's like two, three, four mobs even sometimes. 
And that is something that you really shouldn't do, because for most jobs, AoE is worth it from two targets. Now, not, of course, not all jobs has it from two targets. Some of them are three targets. Um, so kind of take a look at which job that is. But in most parts, or for most jobs, once there's two targets, AoE is already worth it more than single target. So learn how to do your AoE, know what you should do with your AoE as well. Like, for example, if you take a look at Warrior, Warrior's AoE is worth it from two targets, but for example, Felcleave and Decimate, Decimate is only worth it from three targets, so when there's two targets, you still use Felcleave. But, so those are kind of small things that you can kind of optimize, I guess you could say. But if you're not sure, if you just see two mobs, use your AoE, because for most of the time, it's going to be more worth it from two targets starting. I think Black Mage is one that also likes three targets or something like that. I don't know all of the specifics, but that's pretty much what that is as well. So, if you're a DPS, a tank, a healer, do your AoEs, because that is going to make it so that the mobs die a lot faster, and if they die fast enough, by the time your tank's cooldowns run out, when the healer will have to start healing again, the mobs are dead already, and the healer won't have to heal, meaning they can just contribute to the DPS a whole lot more. I'll also put some really quick things on the screen, because a lot of people think that sometimes healer DPS isn't really worth it. It's quite the opposite. Um, as you can see, this is the lock of the group that I was running with yesterday, I do almost the same DPS as our tank. So even though a lot of people think that healer DPS can be negligible a little bit at times and they just stand around and wait to heal, here you can basically see that this is not the case and that healer DPS is definitely a very big contributing factor to your dungeon runs as well. I mainly say this because I see healers are usually the ones that just stand around if one of the party members is just standing around of course. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. So, if you're a healer, do damage, use your off-global cooldowns first before you start healing with your global cooldowns. If you're a tank, use your cooldowns, and if you're a DPS, know how to do AoE, and also use all of those raid buffs and those personal buffs, not only for the boss fights, but also for all of the trash packs. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I hope this was kind of helpful if there were some things that you didn't know about yet, and maybe this will help people make not only their own dungeon run smoother but also the ones for your party members so that's gonna be it for me i hope you learned something and i'll see you in the next one